Okay, you're on, Randy. Okay, good morning, everybody. And if you missed some of the chat before, uh, Val has been kind enough to upload a worksheet into the chat, which will be helpful during her talk. So you can go grab that and I'll give you something to work on while she's talking. Uh, we're very fortunate to have Valerie here today. Um, I'm sure she'll tell you a little bit where she's originally from, but she does live in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, which is great. Uh, before she started her own firm, Valerie Lewis spent more than 20 years in the corporate America building partnerships and uncovering outcomes for clients nationwide. Now she uses those skills to identify, develop, and optimize the success stories customers can tell. She works with, a com with complex tech companies, healthcare groups, professional services, and customers facing retail, among others. She's got an MBA from Duquesne University, lives with her family in Flower Mound, and her talk today is titled, The Top Five Ways Your Customer Can Help Sell You. She breaks down the nuts and bolts of how to take what customers are saying about you and your business and spread their kind words to your projects. Please join with me in welcoming Valerie Lewis. Thank you. All right. When I was 16, I just finished up my junior high school in Eastern Pennsylvania. It was a Saturday morning in the summer. My parents were already out that morning running errands. I woke up and rolled over to pick up the phone to give one of my girlfriends a call. We had a very important conversation to have one what we were going to wear that evening to a Steve Miller band concert. So while we're discussing our tank tops and jean shorts of what to wear, another call had beeped in on the phone. Fortunately, my parents had finally gotten call waiting. The call was from one of my dad's convenience stores. I was told the store clerk had had a seizure and there was no one there to manage the store. But the, fortunately, the ambulance was already on its way. I acted quick on my feet and called the store that was closer and had the additional clerk go over to handle things at the store where the clerk had had a seizure. So I hopped in my dad's minivan that we fondly called White Shadow. I backed down out of the driveway and headed over to the convenience store, but it seemed to take so long to get there. My dad's van was just not getting any pickup and was not moving, but to me that's what it felt like when you have all this adrenaline, you just wanna get somewhere really fast, it takes forever. When I finally arrived, Ray the man who had called our house was a loyal customer. Ray was loyal because my dad treated him like family. He treated all his customers like family. Ray was there when the seizure happened and he had called the ambulance and took that extra step to go behind the counter and use the emergency phone list to call my parents' house. So the, at that point, the ambulance had come and gone. The police had come and gone. The clerk from the other store was handling the cash register. And Ray, Ray was still there until I arrived. Ray could have left, but he felt a responsibility and wanted to see that everything was happening and handled correctly at the convenience store, a convenience store that he did feel like home, which may sound odd, but getting his cup of coffee and his snack was as much a part of his day as brushing his teeth. It was in that moment that I learned the impact of creating a positive customer experience. And while there was no Google or Yelp review at that time, I know Ray would have given a five out of five and a raving review about that convenience store. What I'd like to share with you today are my top ways to maximize customer referrals and have your customer sell for you so you can start creating your community of Rays. All right, I'm going to share my screen. All right. So starting, where I like to start off is to talk to you today about customer referrals and how they can help you sell. But there's something you need to keep in mind. Your customers have done the research and may already think that they made up their buying decision. Just check out these staggering statistics. 85% of your customers trust an online review from a stranger as much as a personal recommendation. Consumers read an average of seven reviews before trusting your business. And this one's on the handout that you have. 70% of business to business buyers already decided the direction they're going to go before calling you. And I find that last statistic the most staggering. This means that your referrals need to go beyond the data and appeal to the emotional side and the emotional aspect of buying. The referral will either 
prove them right and they'll continue to move forward your company, or the referral can prove them wrong and change their mind from going with your competitor and going with you. So I know this is a lot, but you're in luck. What I want to cover today is how to use your customer success to influence your prospects buying decisions. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> First, um, I want to begin on the ground floor on how to start finding your raves, your, your raving fans. And perhaps you've already identified many of these fans, but how do you get more? Because we can't have too many raving fans out there about your business. And here's where you can start, what you can start doing. And do this immediately following this discussion here. Who are those that have a strong relationship with your brand? Those customers who've maximized the value, they purchase you over a year, you, and you most likely naturally know who these are right off the top of your head. Uh, who has volunteered you to friends or family? Clear and simple, they've done it before and they'll be willing to do it again. Or perhaps someone who's provided positive feedback on the conversation you've had on the phone or a little short email, uh, even in a survey, if you, if you happen to send out any surveys. So these are also that collection of your rays that you'll have to put, it, to put aside to start identifying how you can tap more into those customers. Uh, someone who completed a Google review, and this is interesting, even if it's not a positive review, it's still your opportunity to reach out. Perhaps they would update their review. I worked recently with, with a client who I recommended that to. Simply reach out and give the customer who'd given them a Google review of one. And I kid you not, simply by the owner calling the reviewer and clearing up a miscommunication, the consumer changed that Google score from a one to a five. And at the time, as we were discussing the review of a one, uh, to change it, for them to have an average of like a four and a half Google review, she needed five, 10, five positive reviews, reviews of a score of, positive, of a five. So having a low score really does, does take a toll, but simply by communi communicating and clearing up the miscommunication, she was able to move past that. Perhaps there's someone who's had a problem with your, co with your company in the past and it was resolved and even better exceeded their expectations. So I'm fascinated by this study that was recently done on this very topic in a new released book called The Expansion Sale. Their research indicates that customers generally have a neutral image of brands, but until a mistake is made and then quickly rectified to their satisfaction, that was then the customer had a more positive image on their brand and was more likely to recommend them to others. And uh, a, a final way I'll share of how to uh, identify your race is someone who was an advocate during the buying process. So this is someone who was there, who wanted to go ahead with, with your product or service. And this person wants to then now support that and know that they're successful uh, their stories was successful. So I'd like to pause there and see if there's any questions because uh, I want this to, to be a conversation and not just to be a lecture, but wanted to share that information initially with, with everyone. So if you want to throw something uh, in the chat or unmute yourself if you have any questions up until this point. And I'm... Go ahead. I have a question. Sure. Is it is it a rare thing that a competitor gives you a bad review? Is that, is that a uh, urban legend or does that really happen? I don't, I don't have any statistics or any information on that. Ricky. Um, no, I, I am not sure I would have to research that one. <laughs> That's a great question. I certainly hope not because I like to look at the best of everyone um, and, and find that just really dirty, but uh, I don't have an answer. Val, I do have a question. Yes. You mentioned raving fans. I guess to what my question to you is what, to what extent have you used that book as, as part of your, or would you use that book as part of your, your, your marketing strategy? I have, I, I'm not currently using the raving fans book as part of my marketing strategy. Um, it's just one of those, uh, nomenclatures out there that's often used. <laughs> All righty. Al, your slide says, uses the term raise. Uh, what's a ray? 
Um, so in my introduction, I was sharing about um, uh, Ray was the individual, the man who was someone who's a very loyal customer at my uh, dad's store. My oh, dad's sorry, store. I, I missed that. Thank you. <laughs> no problem. That would make it confusing. <laughs> Thanks for pointing that out. Okay. It looks like we're good. You can you can keep on. Okay. Well, David, since you're on unmute, and I'll unmute someone uh, next. Um, can you read this? Actually, can you see my slide? <laughs> yeah, we can. I can see your slide. Okay, I didn't see the green box around it. Awesome. If you could read that, please. Handling your taxes is CNK's area of expertise. Our goal is to look out for your best interests and leave the tax filing worry to us, affording you more time to concentrate on generating income and caring for your family. Terrific. And then if I can have a volunteer um, to read number two. How about Ricky? Can you unmute yourself and read this? The CNK team keeps me abreast of changes in tax code, advising me on the best course of action, knowing they are looking out for my interest. I now worry less and have more time to concentrate on my priorities of generating income and caring for my family. Okay, so I'm gonna put both of those on the screen here. Any reactions from the group? Um, maybe perhaps one resonates more with you, one or number two, uh, any, anything? You have to share when you see these number one resonates with me better because i'm thinking from a personal tax perspective and it's short and sweet and they're looking out for me and number two strikes me as more of a i, I don't want a, i don't want somebody calling me and telling me about changes in tax code i just want them to take care of my taxes and do the right thing for me uh, i'm just the opposite uh to me uh, number two is a customer testimonial somebody that's very happy and satisfied with their service and they uh you know they spent the old, old saw spending time uh on your business not in your business that's what this essentially says i can go i can go do what i need to do i don't need to worry about my taxes ck does it take care of that for me and, and you nailed it right there my electric. <laughs> um, I, uh, that is from the voice of the customer and that is a customer testimonial. So it's, it's um, at their, their, you're saying it. Um, this is someone who is, I interviewed and was talking about how CNK takes care of everything. They don't have to worry about it. They can focus on, and they don't even like taxes. They can't stand the word of it. Um, this is now able to free up their life to not have to worry about it. And they know that things are being taken care of. So that's what I'm going to get to next is that uh, customer testimonial and what that means. So you'll see this uh, first piece on the handout here. When you tell a customer your product or service is great, it's marketing and the buyer considers it part of that sales pitch. But when the customer tells them your product or service is great, I mean, just hold on. That's a testimonial and the prospect, believes that the customer experience has a natural edge over the mar over marketing traditional marketing because it has all this credibility the testimonials simply are these recommendations from satisfies buyers that affirm the value of your product or service and really can be accomplished in one to three glowing sentences why are they important and they're often underutilized but they're effective and free. Testimonials um, are, are helpful to have, and they, they bring credibility. But it's not just important to have these well to have testimonials, but to have well crafted testimonials. So, uh, I like to tell you about a company, Skinny Performance Weight Loss, who knew the importance of well crafted testimonials. And for Skinny, it was more than their clients losing weight. It's a life changing experience for their overall health. Um, if I can have someone read this one, uh, Deborah is going to have one of the ladies since it's a lady's voice speaking on the, <laughs> on the next two quotes. The staff at Skinny have been great. They have answered all of my questions. Even after the first week, I was down eight pounds. I'm loving it. Oh, terrific. That's great. What a wonderful client testimonial to have. 
but there's more to it. Skinny knows that to get customers to understand to invest, Skinny Performance Weight Loss is an investment for their clients and they are making that in their health. So the testimonial needs to dig deeper. They pulled me in as a third party to interview the clients and ident what I identified was the most transformative time for skinny clients is when they would reach this maintenance stage. They would be able to maintain their weight at this point and that's a key factor in weight loss. Um, I'm sure many of us have been there. You work so hard only to you know, have a, a, a great weekend, Memorial weekend and having a wonderful time and you know, throwing all that weight back on. So after the official program has been completed, they really wanna show that they're supporting their clients in the maintenance stage. So I did an interview um, with the same skinny client. It's a woman business owner in her, in her 50s. And um, Deborah, you did an awesome job. I'm just gonna <laughs> have you sh share this one as well. Skinny's coaching and motivation helped me reach and maintain the ideal weight for my health. For the first time since high school, I'm excited to shop for new jeans. Awesome. <laughs> so what you're able to see from the second version is able to ascertain that weight loss has been a struggle her entire life. Skinny was by her side and will continue to be by her side. She's at a healthy weight for her body and she's excited and confident to show off her look in new clothes and this was all done in just two sentences and the question i have for all of you and you can um throw, throw this in in chat or unmute but um who is reading this testimonial and starting to make a purchase decision before even calling or having a consult with skinny can you can you sort of repeat that question so who is reading this testimonial or even talk a, poten a potential buyer of Skinny's product. Yeah, seventy percent of them, based on the statistics. Absolutely. So the, the, having a quote that's impactful, uh, a testimonial that they have out in the Google review and their website, is, is extremely important to beginning a, a point across. So when do you use testimonials? Really, they can be used at any part of the buyer's journey, from early in the research pages stages to later on with the Google review, uh, written testimonial on your website, or even that moment right before making a purchase when your buyer's still in the fence, they, they, they're checking out the, the reviews. Um, and those last minutes before potentially making a decision is when all parts of the brain are moving. The emotional, logical, and fear is really kicking in. Um, so a guilty pleasure of mine is to watch this one lifestyle channel, this woman, Brittany, on YouTube, and she records fun segments, and one of them that she does is top 20 item, $20 items to buy on Amazon. Well, three parts of my brain were all working at once when I went to purchase Brittany's recommended mini waffle maker. My emotional brain was like, so you know, like that waffle maker is bonus my favorite teal and so small and cute i mean like totally rad duh what's my problem it's less than 20 dollars. i spend that in two trips to starbucks i should totally buy it my logical brain was well your current waffle maker is bulky and hard to clean but do you need another kitchen gadget yeah i was afraid i was going to make a mistake by buying a frivolous purchase I should look up a five-star review and see what other positive experiences people had. Oh, they love their new waffle maker and it's compact and easy to clean. They use it all the time. It's all parts of my brain, the emotional, the logic and fear were all working on overdrive to decide on purchasing this mini waffle maker, <laughs> even this frivolous purchase. So um, after all that and all my brain is, is moving like that. So who thinks I purchased it? You bought it. I still have it sitting in my Amazon cart. I don't know why, but I'm going to purchase it one day when I either might see myself making more waffles or I just need some retail therapy. <laughs> I've also spent most of my adult life interested in fitness. I've been a member of gym or fitness studio and I like to do exercise classes because I can schedule and commit to them in my day. But I had a few challenges. I don't want to get up early. <laughs> the time it takes to drive back and forth uh, to the gym and 
putting in the time at the gym, I wasn't seeing the results I wanted. So I'm paying this monthly expensive membership and have no direction to my workouts. So through some mutual friends, I found myself Facebook friends with Lori. One day Lori posted about Beachbody's online workouts and all her years of being a Beachbody coach, she had never seen a deal this good. So I'm not one to turn down a good deal, especially with a satisfaction guarantee. I decided to sign up. Initially the online workouts would serve as a backup when I was not able to make it to the gym. But I had a, and I had a friend that tried one of the, one of the workouts recently and she, she really enjoyed it. Uh, so I decided to give it a try too. It was only 30 minutes a day, for 21 days. And so halfway through the, the program, I found a solution. I found a solution to the problem I was facing for years. I could now roll out of bed, squeeze in my 30 minute workout at home, get my girls up in the morning. I was happy because I was not losing sleep, happy because I could prioritize me, what I wanted to do, and happy to have a convenient solution and one that was seeing results in a, on the scale in a more toned body. So the purpose of me sharing the story is not to tell beef body. I do have more info. Um, <laughs> sharing an example of a customer story. And it's my customer story about how Beachbody changed my life. And what I'd like to, to talk about is what, more about what is a customer story. Um, we're all familiar with stories. <laughs> we have a, a, a great storyteller here in the group. And a story, story can be that expansion of those one to three testimonials. And people are familiar with it. They have heard stories all growing up. They tell stories, they reshare stories. And what makes a great story is often three key components. These three components is what will convert your prospects into your customers. So let me share the story progression using my beach body example. So the first is a norm. This is the situation where you're sharing and it'll resonate with your prospect. You'll begin to have the connection between your potential customer. Uh, so how many people have ever had a gym membership and find it hard to fit it in their day? Anyone on the call here? joined a gym now or in the past and yep. um, kind of hard to get there. Oh yeah. Absolutely. Um, so it's, it's, it's a connection and many people can resonate with that. So that's the connection in the story is having that challenge that I had of getting to the gym, making the time. And then the next part, and this is uh, in your, your handout here, is the explosion. And this is demonstrating your solutions value to your prospect. So I started the 21 day beach body program. It took only 30 minutes a day and halfway through the program, I was, I was hooked. It was my explosion. It was my moment. I realized this was, this is what I needed to do. Um, and finally the outcome, this is what allows your prospect to visualize themselves having a similar experience and success. So the prospect can see themselves rolling out of bed, sneaking in a quick workout before getting the kids ready, or maybe they don't have kids. They like to exercise after work, but it, it's the time factor and they can, they can understand the time factor. Um, it, it gets away from them. So the point is it's making a time commitment. It's getting to the gym, but this is, this is the outcome that someone can see themselves experiencing. For a story to be impactful and have all three points, um, it's necessary to start with that norm, create the arch of the explosion and conclude with the outcome. What you don't want to do is try and shorten it and give a summary so everyone doesn't get the, the full context of the story. Uh, so you can reference here in the out, um, handout again. So sharing stories in your business helps you to communicate in a way that's persuasive, a way that's compelling and memorable. You'll be the front runner, runner over just about every other business in your area of expertise simply by telling a story. There's a number of reasons why stories are so powerful. We're raised with stories, bedtime stories, stories our parents told us about their childhood. Storytelling connects us intimately. When hearing other people's story, we better understand them. One of my favorite quotes is from Dale Carnegie is, seek first to understand, then be understood. And we do that by listening to other people's stories. So when to use stories? All the time. 
integrate them in conversations with your prospects, can post on websites, post on personal media, include stories in personal emails that you're sending to prospects, uh, in email campaigns that you send to the prospects. The more you use stories that relate your potential buyer, the more you will sell. Stories are impactful. Early in my career, my former employer um, gave me a new area of responsibility, and it was to coordinate reference calls. I thought, okay, this is easy. Match this prospect with this current customer. Bam, check it off the list. My first request came in from Kim. She was a new business sales rep. She shared her prospect was interested in talking to a current customer about their experience with our analytics solution. So I reached out to Ed, one of our season's account manager, and he's worked with many of the current customers. And he set up reference calls before when the, the system was with the account managers. So Ed identified a site that he used often for reference calls. And I go ahead and set up the reference call with that site, handed the logistics, the background information to both the prospect and the current customer of who they're going to be speaking to. So the, the day had come for the call and the current customer conducted the call like they normally would. They did a great job sharing their story on the buying process and experience with implementation. It was good, call complete. Customer did a great job articulating the story as they normally do. It's a very seasoned customer. Not so fast. At the end of the day, I received a call from Kim, the sales rep the new business sales rep. She explained the prospect was not satisfied with the call. Instead, the prospect was interested in hearing about the outcomes achieved by the customer using our analytic solution, not what the customer shared on why they purchased and how they implement it. I was beside myself. I blew it. I had missed the mark on preparing and uncovering the important details of what the prospect wanted to talk about then in turn prepare the customer to have their stories set up for that conversation. And even worse, this mistake could have contributed to delaying what already was a nine to 12 month sales cycle. It was a very hard lesson to learn and in what not to do when preparing for a reference call, but in mistakes comes teachable moments, and it was the impetus for me creating and implementing a successful reference program at a Fortune 10 company. Simply put, reference calls are conversations between your customer and a prospective customer. It can be a phone call, it can be a webinar. Um, and on the handout here, the customer reference program provides a way to leverage your customers to establish, maintain, and strength, strengthen your brand. The call can alleviate fear, uncertainty, doubt that your prospect may have in the buying process. Why are they important? Well-planned execu and executed reference calls, um, on your handout here, can shorten the sales cycle, have increased deal sizes, and to foster trust with your prospective customers. But with high risk, there's high reward. And there's a lot of positives from utilizing reference customers because they must be carefully planned out. When to use a reference call? I say it as a last resort. I say this a bit tongue in cheek, but in all seriousness, hopefully you won't need to coordinate many reference calls because ideally you want to use one of the other four tools that I'm sharing about today to gain the most mileage from your customer referrals. Reference calls are a one-to-one -one event, so it makes it very resource intensive and also requires this prep work from your customer. Um, additionally, when a customer, a prospective customer is asking for a reference call, it could potentially mean a breakdown in their journey. It could be an indicator that something was missed as part of the sales process or they have a lack of trust. Not to say you can't get by after this, but uh, it definitely is an indicator and not something you wanna use as your first resource. Um, perhaps a, a case study could be an option and 
where our experience is, is my husband and I were recently shopping for a new dishwasher at Nebraska Furniture Mart. And what's important to know is that my husband is an engineer and very analytical by nature. So as we're walking through the aisles of dishwashers, top of my husband's list was the important features that were on the energy, as part of the energy saving reports. He would intentionally look at the stats each dishwasher had listed and had lots of questions for the sales rep. If we were not in such a dire need of a dishwasher, my husband and my husband had access to case studies on the different dishwashers, he, he would have been intently reading them. An analytical buyer like my husband needs charts and graphs and studies and finds these pieces important for his buying decision. So you see on the handout here, a case study indicates a solution to a problem, summary of results, and analysis of results. The case study shares information using data and evidence of your product or service that benefits a customer. It's different than a customer story, um, because you may have that question, because a case study typically does not provide sensory information and dialogue and context or a point of time. Case studies serve several specific purposes, and you'll, you'll see these on your handout. Case studies are niche specific. They hone in on outcomes that are uh, things that your customers care about. They position your brand as authoritative. Few things are trusted more than stats and factual claims. And case studies are built on the premise of research conclusion and information that's provided to support your brand. They explain how problems are solved. Well, a product page on your website may say our widgets helped customers reach X. A case study dives more into that and claims and produces takeaways. Our widget reached 42% of customers by covering X, Y, and Z to meet their needs. Um, and the, the fourth thing is prospect centric. A good case study is really focusing on the prospect and what's in it for me. So when do you use case studies? Similar to customer stories, case studies can be posted on your website, shared in emails. A case study is best introduced when there's a greater understanding of the prospect's need and you can match those needs with a particular case study. So it's not just handing over a case study, here read this, it's really sharing with someone, hey, this is what their challenge was and here's statistical proof and background based on this case study for you to take a look at. And especially if you identify those analytical type buyers that need that kind of information, all, all the better. They're the ones that want to see these case studies. So my, my uh, final area to talk about is the impact of video. The first televised presidential debate took place between John F. Kennedy and Richard Nixon in September 1960. After the debate, the polls were in and were taken from the radio listeners and the television viewers. The audience on the radio gave an edge over Nixon winning the debate. For the audience who was able to see the cans on TV, they said Kennedy won. So what's the difference? People, why? Well, Kennedy was radiating health just a figure that you were seeing. But Nixon, on the other hand, uh, viewers said he appeared pale and a bit listless. What we learn here is that the visual makes a difference and it's ultimately what resonated more with the audience and helped them make a connection, which leads me to how impactful a video webinar can be for audience of prospects. So what is a webinar? Maybe some months ago, many of us weren't as familiar with webinars, but I uh, definitely are now. Uh, webinar is a live virtual event. I would urge a webinar to be a video, like you see here, of presenter or presenters. Uh, webinars are few to many, so this is an opportunity of presenting and interacting with many people all, all over the U.S., like um, we're going to be doing here in the future on Fridays. What's enticing with a webinar too is the power of scarcity. It's a foundation of any campaign or webinar. People know there's a scheduled time for this event to happen and they want to work towards attending the event at that time. Even if it can be an evergreen webinar or it can be posted, there's something about knowing a certain time to attend and the unknown if it's going to be posted that really draws people in. 
Webinars, why are they important? They're free. Just show up or not show up. Well, it's the act of someone planning and set aside their time to listen about a certain subject. They're unconsciously positioning you as an expert in the field. So this is on the handout. Uh, positioning you as an expert in the field even before the content, teaching the content. They're a great way to attract new eyes and generate new leads, nurture existing leads. They ultimately can convert prospects to new customers. So generate and nurture leads. Webinars build relationships. Just short of visiting your prospect in person or jumping on the, a phone call, webinars are a great way to build personal relationships with your leads. You can leave a great impression from people just, just, just hearing you speak about a particular subject. When do you use a webinar? Uh, when you can dedicate the time to create content, uh, the, the lead time to set them up, and just as well, the, the follow-up after a webinar. And the webinar, of course, I'm talking about is, is content provided by you, by your customers speaking, your raving fans speaking to your prospective customers. So we covered a lot here of uh, the five ways to use customer referrals. And the next question may be is, how do you engage with your raves, your raving fans? How do you engage your raving fans? Well, first you wanna have a good customer list. You wanna identify who these variety of your customers are, uh, do some internal research. Uh, if you have other people that you're working with uh, I, I, in your team, find out who they feel is a good customer. Call your customer, um, ask, oops, Call your customer and see how they're doing. Are, are they a happy customer? <laughs> you wanna gauge that first. And then if you feel they are a happy customer that would be willing to do uh, some type of referral for you, you don't have to know which kind it is, just if they would be interested in uh, speaking positively about your solution, ask them. So that piece uh, leads to conducting the interview. So using planned questions to hear about their experience, what they are trying to solve, how they made the decision, did they have challenges along the way? Was there, what was the outcome? How is things going now? What would they recommend to others in the future as to why they should purchase your solution? The piece here also is to record and transcribe. I use a program called otter.ai. It's not perfect, but it captures 90% of what's said, um, and then I review it and correct it. But this is a great way to capture what's being said so you're really focusing on that conversation. And based on the customer interview, you can then look at, okay, can this be a larger customer story? Is this just a few sentences for a testimonial? Can we have an opportunity for a webinar here? Is there, is there enough information that they have to share the successes and outcomes of how they use the solution to, to set it up as a webinar? Um, so you can start to draw those conclusions. And then write the content, uh, if it's gonna be the testimonial or the story, so you can really distill out the messages that was being shared. And anything that gets written is of course approved by the customer, you need to obtain approvals from them. Um, so this, this middle column here, that's something that uh, folks hire me for, <laughs> I take that off their plate. It's the advantages of outsourcing and not just about taking things off your list, as a third party, um, I've experienced speaking to hundreds of customers and finding the, those details, those nuggets of maybe something that they already assume you know that, that you're along, along with them during the process. I also bring a fresh perspective to probe and ask additional questions and cover the story behind why your solution changed their lives. So this is all we talked about today. I, I think there's, um, some, some interesting information to be gleaned here about the types of referrals, uh, the mechanics of finding your customers, engaging with your customers. Um, and I have, one, um, I have one last thought to leave you and then I'll share with you a free gift. But remember I shared that my trip to my dad's convenience store in the beginning seemed to take so long. It, uh, time takes on a whole new meaning. Well, it wasn't all that, it wasn't all adrenaline. It turns out I had driven the entire 20 minutes with the parking brake on. Um, yes, a 16 year old driver in Pennsylvania. Uh, it cost my dad a trip to the mechanic and me a little embarrassment, but also serves as a great parallel that behind every 
testimonial, customer story, reference call, case study, webinar, your customer was on a journey and sometimes had to be overcome detours and potholes or maybe even some new breaks. But it's the depth of their story that makes your customer so credible and helps them sell your solution. So my uh, free gift today to you is the ebook. You can go to www.discoveringexcellence.com and go ahead and download that. You have to throw your email in there, but it'll come automatically and I will not spam, spam you by any means. Um, and uh, just what I want to also share with you, and I'll take some questions, is um, to, I have an offer going on through midnight tonight. So um, I'll put the link in the chat here as well. So the webinar recording, so this is an opportunity to um, really capture everything to help you do it yourself. Also, I offer a customer referral bootcamp, and this is where I can help you um, with, with this process. Uh, and then there's a customer referral consultation. So th this is where we dig into the process of what needs to be done and uh, where I can help and plan and implement it for you. And with that, um, we can open it up for questions. All talking. right, Val. Yeah, if you can unshare your screen so we can see oh, the, the grid. Yes. That would be great. Awesome. Everybody, let's uh, give her, uh, I'm not going to turn the mics on yet, So, but but uh, yeah, let's, great job, Val. We really appreciate it. Um, we've got about, let's see, I, I, I can maybe handle one, one question at this point from timing standpoint. That offer sounds great, by the way. So, um, uh, anything that you want to post, Val, in the in the chat for for the folks or anybody that's interested, post in the chat that uh, to to Val or you know in the in the general that you're interested in that as well. Any questions for Val? Anybody um, scanning the? Any just wave your your little hands and I'll try and call on you. Okay, Randy, go ahead. Unmute yourself. Uh, not a question, but uh, I got to tell you, uh, you blew me away. Uh, your, your LinkedIn profile and what Dave gave me to tell about you do not do justice to what you just told us. <laughs> so I would suggest you think about everything you told us today and go back to your LinkedIn profile and maybe you redo some of it because this was very informative. I knew very little about this subject and now I know a little more. Yeah, that's a great job. All right, well, I appreciate you, Val. I'm going to actually stop recording here because we're gonna we're gonna do a couple of announcements and i want to share a couple of things with the group